Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and behind me is Dr. Andrew Wakefield, a disgraced British physician who authored in February 1998 a study in the British medical journal Lancet that linked the MMR vaccination to autism. Now this set off a worldwide panic, which we still feel today. Vaccine hesitancy has become one of the top 10 threats to public health, according to the World Health Organization. But who is Dr. Wakefield and what are the details of his study? Thanks to the efforts of investigative journalist, Brian Deere, this study has been exposed as the fraud that it was always intended to be. This was fraudulent research, agenda-based research, and a scheme by Dr. Wakefield and others to make money off of vulnerable people looking for answers for their children's autism. The behind the scenes greed that Dr. Wakefield exhibited in this case was described by the British Medical Council as being dishonest, unethical, and callous. Recall that this study was done on disabled children, and it was driven by financial greed on the part of Dr. Wakefield. So join me now as we have a look at one of the most egregious violations of the doctor-patient relationship I have seen in my 30-year medical career. Well, in order to put this study into some perspective, these 12 children that were involved in the study were referred to Dr. Wakefield through an attorney by the name of Richard Barr. Now, each of the 12 children had developmental issues. Uh, they had what were considered regressive autism, which meant that they started off normal and then they developed autistic symptoms, which worsened. And apparently this was somehow related to the MMR vaccination. Now let's start off with the conclusion of the study. The onset of behavioral symptoms was associated by the parents with measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination in eight out of the 12 children. In these eight children, the average interval from the exposure to the first behavioral symptom was 6.3 days with a range of one to 14 days. But is that the whole story? Prior to the onset of this study, Dr. Wakefield and Mr. Barr approached the legal counsel and asked for funding for a proposed lawsuit against the vaccine manufacturers. Now in this application, Wakefield had already claimed to identify this syndrome before even testing for it. Children with enteritis disintegrative disorder, an expression he used for bowel inflammation and re regressive autism, form part of a new syndrome. And this was done before any of the children were investigated. Nonetheless, the evidence is undeniably in favor of a specific vaccine-induced pathology. Now, this is what they put on the application. They also aimed to show a sudden onset temporal association with the vaccination to make a case for a proximal cause and vaccine liability. So basically, they were trying to start class action lawsuit in England which eventually grew to include 1,500 plaintiffs. Now, the thing that bothers me the most about this is that they had already had their conclusions before they studied even one of these children. Then they went out to elicit patients to come into the study, and they recruited them through anti-vaccination groups in England, including one called JABS. More on that later. Now, the purpose of this video is to go over the study itself, and the best way to do that is let's have a look at all 12 children. Child number one was three years old when he came to the attention of Dr. Wakefield. This child had first been seen by his general practitioner at age nine months and was reported by the mother to be hard of hearing and not responding to her like she would expect a child to be. This can be one of the earlier signs of autism that a child starts ignoring their mother. Now, he got normal milestones up until about age 18 months, where he started to show some delayed development. The problem is, is that the child got an MMR vaccination at age 12 months. That was well after the first symptoms were reported at nine months, and well before the child started developing delays at 18 months. 
How do you solve this problem? Well, during questioning, Dr. Walker Smith, who was one of Dr. Wakefield's associates and co-authors on this study, did elicit a history of a possible illness seven to 10 days after the vaccination. The mother said that she thought that the child had been pale, may have had a fever, and could have had some delirium. Now, when Dr. Walker Smith reported this, he put question marks before pale and delirium and fever. Now, when Dr. Wakefield got it, what he did was he took out the question marks and reported it as a fact. The child had these symptoms seven to 10 days after the MMR vaccination. He claimed the delirium was the first sign of any trouble in the child and put the time of onset to be seven days after the vaccination. Now, case number two was a young boy and his first concerns about the MMR vaccination from his mother, who was a anti-vaccine activist, member of a group called JABS, was reported at about six years of age. Now, the child had his MMR vaccination at age 15 months, and his mother reported on this interview that he had begun headbanging and screaming all night, which was new for him. When pressed as to when it actually started, she actually admitted that it didn't start any earlier than two months after the vaccination and possibly as long as six months. Even though it was reported as being a vaccine associated symptom within one to 14 days and she was listed as 14 days, the child's actual symptoms did not begin to occur until at a minimum of two months after the vaccination and possibly as long as six months after the vaccination. Now, another interesting note on this particular case is that even though the history is very clear here, there are no histories in those 12 children that actually match this child's history, even though he's listed as child number two. Now, the third child got his MMR at 14 months and began to develop severe developmentally delayed problems about 15 months later. While the parents felt that this was related to the MMR injection and sought legal assistance to get justice, quote unquote, from the vaccine manufacturer, they acknowledged that they were not aware of anything that linked an MMR to autism. They just know that their son was autistic and severely developmentally disabled. Child number four had significant cranial facial malformations and developmental delays with reduced vocabulary by age 18 months. Received the MMR vaccination at age four years. Likewise, child five received his MMR at age 16 months, but his medical records showed developmental delays starting at 11 months. Child six had Asperger's syndrome. Child seven did not have features of autism. They were brothers. Like child four, child eight had severe cranial facial malformations and coarctation of the aorta. She seemed to rally a little bit after the coarctation was repaired, but prior to her MMR vaccination at age 18 months, she had a vocabulary of only two or three words. Child nine began to develop developmental disorders approximately two to four months after his MMR vaccination at age 16 months. Child 10 developed a viral infection four months after his MMR, and that is what his doctors associated with his developmental disorders, not the vaccine. Child number 11 was the son of an American engineer from California. His developmental disorder began at age 13 months. This was changed in the Lancet paper to be 15 months, which would have made it one month after his MMR vaccination instead of one month before. Child number 12 was referred to the program by the mother of children six and seven. As you recall, child number seven had no symptoms of autism. Child number six, like child number 12, had Asperger's syndrome. To summarize the findings of the study as determined by the General Medical Council review, which lasted some 217 days, three of the nine children with regressive autism did not have autism diagnosed at all. Only one child had regressive autism. The paper claimed that all 12 children were previously normal, but five had documented pre-existing developmental concerns. Some children were reported to have experienced 
the first behavioral symptoms within days of the MMR, but the records documented these as starting months after vaccination. In nine cases, unremarkable colonic biopsy results were actually changed after a med school review to nonspecific colitis. The parents of eight children were reported as having blamed the MMR, but actually 11 of the children's parents blamed the MMR. And finally, the patients were all recruited through anti-MMR campaigners. And in fact, the parent of child six and seven was an active recruiter for the uh, anti-MMR group JAB. Finally, the study itself was commissioned and funded by a law group for planned class action litigation against a vaccine manufacturer. So the bottom line is that this study was conducted to establish a relationship between one type of vaccination, the MMR, and autism, and was specifically looking for a close association from the time of the shot to the time of the onset to the symptoms. In all 12 cases, this did not occur. So they simply changed the results. The question becomes is why did this happen? Now that will be addressed in our next episode. Now the other thing that I think is very important to note is that Dr. Wakefield was not condemning all vaccinations as a cause of autism. It was a very specific vaccination, the trivalent MMR vaccine, which protects against measles, mumps, and rubella. He had no problem whatsoever with univalent vaccines protecting against one disease, specifically measles. His assertion was the MMR caused autism. And if only we could develop a single valent measles vaccination, we could prevent all of this because the MMR was bad. We could go to the safer alternative, which was the univalent measles vaccination. Fortunately, an application to patent such a univalent measles vaccination was filed in the United Kingdom four months before this study was conducted. Would you like to guess whose name was on that patent application? And while you're thinking about that, who was paid nearly $700,000 by the law firm starting this class action suit against the vaccine manufacturers to provide evidence for their lawsuit? Tune in next week for the rest of the story. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope that this episode was enlightening. Take care.